Hello, this is Dr. David A. Gatros, Department of Computer Science at Florida State University, and I'd like to welcome you to my undergraduate lecture series on selected topics in computer science. You can find these videos and others at my YouTube channel at the URL listed below, or you can simply go to YouTube and search using Gatros and FSU as keywords. Now on to the lecture. I had a request to uh, produce a video for MIPS programming, assembly programming to show how to read in a, uh, a series of numbers and store them into an array. I'm going to incorporate that with um, uh, calling of a function too, so we'll, we'll kind of do two things at once right here. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to uh, call a function where you pass the address of an array and the number of numbers you want to read in and read in the array and then I'm going to call another function where you pass in the address of the array and the number of numbers to print out. So I'm going to read them in and then print them out to show you one how to call functions and pass parameters but also two how to address elements of an array. So let's go ahead and uh, set up our program. Now we want to do our dot data first. Print out a few messages, my standard message one. Okay. few things right here. Uh, we're going to say we're going to store them in memory so we'll call that place numbers. We'll allocate space for that and we'll set aside 40 right now so this will be a um, max of uh, 10 numbers that we can store. You can change that to whatever you want to. I also know that I'm going to need uh, to print out a space between them so I'm going to go ahead and put this in there too and we'll talk about this later. As always, I do my dot align first to line two to make sure that I'm on a full word boundary. This is uh, the start of the program, the dot text. And now dot global main is the entry point to our program. So we'll write this a little bit of a time and then compile it and test it. So the very first thing I want to do is uh, you know, print out the message uh, v0 with uh, four and then we load the address of the message in A0 and those of you who have seen my videos before uh, know how to do this and syscall. Let's make sure that we've got a functioning program. I like to um, incorporate um, a technique I call cab tab which is uh, code a bit and test a bit. I'll actually put this up here for you. Cab tab which is uh, code a bit, test a bit bit. Okay, let's save this. File save and we'll bring up uh, our QT spin. We'll load our program. We always reinitialize and load the file. There's our array sample right there. No errors. Let's run it. Let's see if we get the message out. And we do. Please enter in a number of numbers. All right, very good. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to call a routine. This is right after this one, so we'll separate a little bit. And I'm going to explain each line of code as I go. The first thing I want to do is I want to uh, load the um, parameters. A0 uh, gets the address of the space where we want to put them. We'll call it uh, BRs. Okay. And we're going to say, well, we're going to get 10 in. So uh, the two parameters, A0, A1, get the address of where we want to put it and the, uh, the number of elements we want. Okay. Now we're going to do what's called standard linkage. Now I have to um, uh, go out and get stack space. I'm going to get 4 to uh, uh, save off the uh, return address. I'm going to store the return address in that place I just got. Okay. Say return.
return address. And this is very important that you do this. Every time you call a routine, this is what you want to do. And then you actually call the routine. We're going to say uh, JLA is jump and link, which what the jump and link does is it takes the address of the next instruction, which is the next one I'm going to type in, and puts it into RA. It replaces it. That's why you save it off. When you're done with that routine, you say JR dollar sign RA, and it comes back to this next location. Okay. When it comes back, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to restore the return address to what it was before. And we're going to bring the stack space back to where it was before. We're going to add 4 to it. Okay. And then we're going to stop our program. So that's everything that's right in. Now that calls the program, the uh, subroutine, which is down here. We're going to put it down here. And I'm not going to write it yet. I'm just going to practice this to make sure that it all works. Get numb. And the only thing I'm going to do is just return back to the called routine. So what's going to happen is when I call this function right here, what's going to happen is the return address will have the location of that instruction. It will change. It will go down to right here. It will execute this. It basically says go back to this instruction and continue on. So it's not really going to do anything. But we're going to test to make sure that it assembles OK and that uh, doesn't cause any problems. We're, just, we're going to t test and code a bit. Okay, run, and it, it, it quit and it did okay. So it is what we want to. Now, down here, we want to finish writing this. What I want to do now is I want to write the function that actually reads in the values themselves. I'm going to do this. So the very first thing I do is I'm going to move, move, I'm going to preserve the address, preserve. Uh, address of array. Okay. Okay. In S2, I'm going to preserve preserve number of elements. Okay. I'm going to label right here. I'm going to come back to. Now I want to read in, uh, read in an integer. Sure. Okay. The syscall actually takes care of reading it, and the very first thing I want to do is I want to store it into the array, which is in S1. S1. Okay. Okay. Store the element. Now I have two housekeeping things I have to do. Okay. The very first thing I do, and it doesn't matter which order you do it, I just like to do it this way, is I take my address of my uh, array and I set it to, to next um, word, which is adding 4 to it. Then the next thing I do is uh, I S2, S2, and then negative 1, I decrement my counter. And forgive me if I spelled decrement wrong. I want to test. If the counter is not equal to zero, okay, I want to go to uh, branch num. Okay. Okay. If not at uh, if counter not at zero, get next number. Okay. All right. <coughs> and then of course uh, once we get to that, it'll jump back and go back to the uh, top right here where the load word, right where we left off. So let's save this. And let's, uh, let's load it and see if we got any mistakes. It, we could. You never know. We'll load our array example. Mm, no errors. Okay, that's good. So we're going to run. Oh, now, now it's sitting there and it's waiting for me to enter in uh, numbers. So I'm going to do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then that should be the numbers. All right. Oops, let's go back here to the console. View the console. 
right here and we'll see them you can actually see them right here okay look see here they are this is where we actually stored uh, look at our front see we've got our messages please enter in a series of numbers the numbers you read in and then we allocate the space form so it comes right below those two messages and if we look right here they are there is one there's two there's three four five six seven eight nine and a is ten and then our space right there the program was successful at read in 10 numbers. So that works and it works quite well. Okay, Now we want to print them out. It's done basically the same way. To save myself a little bit of time, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to pause this and write the code and then I'll come back and I'll explain it. But it's very very similar to uh, the procedure to get to them. I just have an additional step that I have to take to uh, uh, print them out. So let me pause this and let me write the code and we'll come back and we'll show it to you. Okay, let's look at the code I just wrote. I wrote this. This is the call to the routine that's going to do the print them. It looks exactly like the call to the previous one. I'm going to load the address of the array into A0. I'm going to load the number of elements into A1. I'm going to get some stack space. I'm going to store the return address in that stack space. I'm going to call the function. When I'm done, it's going to come back and uh, restore the uh, return address and restore the stack space. Down here is my print routine. I've just uh, made a return to it. I'm not going to do anything yet. I'll write that code, but let's uh, save this. And let's test it. You just want to make sure everything's okay. I haven't tested it yet, so no errors. We're going to run. I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And our program should have stopped, and we see that the numbers are entered in there. Very good. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Very good. All right. Now then, let's write the code to actually print the array out. We access it exactly like we did uh, when we read in the numbers, only instead of uh, storing the word, we load the word, and we have to print out a space in between each, uh, each number. Let me write that code, and I'll pull it up, and I'll explain it to you. So here's our print number, okay? Let me explain to it. I'm printing out the message down in here, so I preserve my A0 and A1 and S1 and S2. I print out the message. It says these are the numbers. I uh, Then I'm going to um, uh, start to print uh, a number. I load 1 into V0. That tells it to print an integer. Then I load the number from the storage location, and I print it. Then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to print a space. That's V0 with 11, and then put the space in A0. I'm going to increment my address to the next element in the array. I'm going to decrement my counter with the subtracting 1. And then if the counter is not 0, I'm going to go back up and do it all over again. Let's save this. And let's go back in and run this. See if we got any errors. No syntax errors yet. See, well, well, it still looks pretty good. All right, let's run this. Run. I'm going to enter in my numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then, boom! It prints them out: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let me expand this a little bit here. There is the entire program. Uh, right here, and if you like, I can shrink this a little bit so you can see it all in one page. I'll get a little bit smaller. Okay. 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 So, um, worthwhile uh, trying to do this program. I, I encourage you to uh, try to write this program, write it a couple times so you can do it. And um, uh, modifications are quite possible. For instance, let's say getting the number down here. Let's say that instead of actually sending it a number to read in, that you use some type of sentinel. In other words, uh, as long as I enter in non-zero or something greater than zero, I enter them in or until I type in the end or something like that. It's uh, easy enough to do. Good practice on uh, storing and retrieving arrays. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Look forward to doing another one.